chapter 5 and 6. Winston is taking to Romano 1, which he had earlier asked about. And O'Brien's answer is, the thing that is in room 101 is the worst thing in the world. He is also informed. He also informs him that being alone is not enough to break a man because there are people who can endure pain up to the point of death. But to Winston, he says, in your case, the worst thing in the world happens to be rats. He frightens him using the rats in the mask cage to devour his face and this forces Winston to betray his love for Julia. Ironically, the betrayal and the fact that wins the party succeeds to make the two not to continue to love one another is victory because they have taken away and breaking away their bond of loyalty to one another. The party successfully destroys the only thing that makes them to feel human and their loyalty for one another has been crushed. Winston also wanted to be the master of his thought, but the party has, been, has also taken that away from him for the sake of taking and owning him. Winston screams, do it to Julia, not me. Julia, I don't care what you do to her. Tear her face off. Strip her to the bones, not me. Winston betrays his love for Julia to save himself, a human act of self-preservation. Even though the self is supposed to be preserved and reserved for the use of the party, by trying to save himself, Winston commits a selfish act and so he should be punished for it. However, he is spared and this can be looked at as a flaw in the story. In Romano 1, Winston is strapped to a chair and his head is clamped so that he doesn't move. He reminds Winston of his worst nightmare, which is the dream of being in the dark place with something terrible on the other side of the wall. He informs Winston that rats are on the other side of the wall. His betrayal of Julia frees him and he is seen sitting at Chestnut Tree Cafe where disgraced party members go to drink. He enjoys a glass of victory gin and watches the telescreen. He accepts everything that the party says and does without acknowledging to himself as he can still smell the rats. He traces on the doors that two plus two equals to five. He also remembers seeing Juliet on a cold winter day that March and she has become thickened and stiffened because of the torture and the re-education. He finds out that the thought of sex fills her with repulsive response. They acknowledge that they have betrayed one another but agree never to meet again. It should be noted that the one of the two is interested in continuing the relationship. Winston believes that he hears the echo of the song under the spreading cheese nod, I sold you and you sold me, which he had heard when he saw the political prisoners there many years earlier. He begins to cry and remembers a moment of happiness with his mother and sister. He thinks that it could be a false memory. He looks up and sees the picture of Big Brother on the telescreen making him feel happy and safe. As he listens to the world news, he ponders on the great victory that he has won over himself and the newfound love for Big Brother. Although his stay, his stay at the Ministry of Love has broken his mind, will and thought, his love for Big Brother preludes the need to think for himself. Winston envisions the day that the party will be shut down, will shoot him down. Many therefore criticize Winston's fatalism and believe that he rebels against the party not because he desires freedom, but he looks from the point of psychological imbalance among the list of the ill effects associated to totalitarian governments. The party's control over the minds of its citizens is in order to warn readers of the dangers of totalitarianism. Winston's problem is not caused by an inmate unusual psychological disorder, but by the party. So this becomes irrelevantly overriding as a theme in the novel. Many critics consider the scene where O'Brien threatens to release rats on Winston's face as anticlimax. Many believe that the cage of the rat is not horrible enough for the reader to feel Winston's torment and that it is an arbitrary device unrelated to the powerful and sophisticated working pattern of the party. Winston's 
collapse, does not follow hard on his passionate declaration of, of love for Julia and his hatred for Big Brother in Chapter 4. However, the theme of psychological control, which consists of party manipulation of the body, is important to take note of. Orwell clearly suggests that physical pain and the sense of physical danger can override human reasoning. Winston, who is faced with some hungry rats that can devour his face, cannot act rationally. The fact that his betrayer comes immediately after his declaration of love for Julia suggests that physical pain eliminates the possibility of defending one's emotional feelings or conviction. As noted earlier, Wilson believes that he is a prisoner of his own nervous system, that the party wants him to believe that he is limited by his body, so he has no reason to think, act, or rebel. Totalitarianism has won over humanity, as Winston has now put his real self aside for the party and for Big Brother. He still has ambiguous feelings, and he is haunted by memories of the former time. But he has come to convince himself that these feelings and memories are false. The meeting with Julia resolves some unanswered question. She indeed betrays Winston in the same way that Winston betrays her. She becomes like the other women in the novel, sexless and undesirable, just like women of the party should be. The two repeat the same phrases that Mr. Charrington had done earlier, which is an indication that they have been reindoctrinated by party ideology. They now use the addiction and speech pattern of the party, of the party to glorify it and its leadership. Ultimately, Winston loves Big Brother and will likely spend the rest of his life loving him while waiting for a bullet at the back of his neck to set him free.